The Subcommittee on Health, Employment, Labor, and Pensions will come to order. I note that a quorum is present, and without objection, the Chair is authorized to call a recess at any time. The Subcommittee is meeting today to hear testimony on solutions to address health care challenges facing working families and small businesses. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's hearing. I can remember uh, President Obama's promises regarding Obamacare. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Premiums will go down with the Affordable Care Act. Uh, sadly, but not surprisingly, these were all misleading, empty, broken promises. In reality, Obamacare's regulations, mandates, inflationary subsidies, and misguided economic incentives have made health care even more unaffordable for Americans in the commercial market. It's no surprise that for 13 years of Obamacare, three in four Americans grade the health care system as a D or an F. Working Americans and their families are being crushed, and the American people are tired of their premiums going up. They are tired of their deductibles going up. They're tired of their co-pays going up. So today, in this first Health, Employment, Labor, and Pension Subcommittee hearing of the 118th Congress, House Republicans will put forth a vision for free market health care reform that offers Americans much needed relief. As a nation, we cannot settle for less than American exceptionalism, and we cannot turn to socialist countries for our health care advice. We need to listen to the American people. A vast majority of Americans are actually satisfied with their employer-sponsored insurance. 78% of employees choose to enroll in employer-sponsored insurance when given the option, but it's still too expensive. That's because Democrats have created an unlevel playing field for employers, and Democrats are not interested in addressing affordability issues for employers because the truth is they're scheming with the Biden administration to force every American into a government-funded, one-size-fits-all plan such as the Obamacare marketplace plans. By increasing Obamacare subsidies and overregulating the market, employer-based health care is becoming unaffordable, especially for small business owners. This is an intentional attack by Democrats on private insurance. It's the proverbial Trojan horse for Medicare for all. But one size does not fit all. The correct path forward is to respect and protect the free market and individual choice. Republican solutions seek to decrease health care costs while strengthening the private option that 159 million Americans who are covered enjoy today. Yesterday, I introduced the Self-Insurance Protection Act, and this bill allows small businesses to access stop-loss insurance, a form of insurance that helps employers self-insure and protects them from catastrophic health costs. Another reasonable solution is to increase association health plans. These plans allow Americans to save up to 50% on health care costs by allowing small businesses to band together to offer lower cost health insurance like large employers are able to do. The free market and increased competition will lower prices if we are bold enough to let them do that. A free market only works when there's competition, transparency, and accountability. Consolidation in the marketplace has led to dishonest billing practices. <clears throat> dishonest billing occurs when big hospitals buy up independent doctor's offices and then charge higher prices for doctor services as if they were occurring in a hospital setting. Hospitals should bill the proper rate for their service and not use bogus facility fees as an excuse to tack on thousands of dollars in extra charges. Finally, we should ensure that workers retain access to the deregulated, tele deregulated telehealth options they enjoyed during the COVID-19 health restrictions. And with that, I look forward to the hearing today, and I yield to our ranking member.